Now the eighth property is the reaction of HCl with metal sulfides and bisulfides. Suppose I take a sodium sulfide which is Na2SO3 and I react with hydrochloric gas right. So obviously what is again it is a double displacement reaction. So what is going to form NaCl plus water vapor and what gas we get? We get sulfur dioxide right. So SO3 gets converted into SO2. So it forms NaCl, H2O and SO2. Likewise happens with when we take bisulfite. Suppose I take bisulfite, sodium bisulfite and I react with HCl. So again what I am going to get? I am going to get the same products NaCl, H2O and SO2. So this is how they react with the metal sulfides and metal bisulfides. Now you know that how they react with metal, you know how they react with metal carbonates, metal bicarbonates, metal sulfides and metal bisulfides. When they react they just release the respective gases. And you know that uh, it, what is its nature? It is, it is actually oxidizing agent and you know that what is oxidizing agent? It is, a, it is a agent which is oxidized the other substance and itself gets reduced. So just look at the board how it is just going to oxidize the other substance. So what example I am taking? Suppose it is MnO2, manganese dioxide, we are going to react with hydrogen chloride. Again you can see that do two compounds so that means double displacement reaction. So that means it is just going to react here with this side. So we are going to get manganese dichloride, we are going to get water vapor and along with that we will get a chlorine gas. And you will be uh, surprised to know that it is also a test for HCl. So this is also one of the tests for HCl because this chlorine gas when it escapes because the chlorine gas has uh, the characteristic properties that is bleaches the, the substance and many few properties. So that means evolution of chlorine gas just confirms that the given substance is the hydrogen chloride gas. So likewise we can just form the precipitates of the insoluble chlorides, just see this is an important property. So what happens when we react with AgNO3 silver nitrate, when we react with lead nitrate, likewise when we react with this kind of compounds, so what happens see when we are just reacting again it is a double displacement reaction because they are just going to mutually exchange the ions. So what as a result they will form, obviously Ag is going to react with Cl. So AgCl, we have H2O and we have NO2. <coughs> so this AgCl actually remains behind, it is a precipitate in, and what is the color for it? The color is white, right? So that means AgCl is an insoluble precipitate which is left behind with white color, right? And uh, same happens with lead nitrate. So what happens again, it is going to form lead chloride and it is going to release the same gases because both are nitrates. Again, this is going to leave uh, left behind because it is an insoluble precipitate. So this, this, uh, this is the reaction in which you can show that yes, they can form the precipitate of the insoluble chlorides as they reacted with the silver uh, nitrate and with the lead nitrate. Likewise, they can show with the different nitrates. Next reaction we have or a question which is a very important question and you get in paper what is aqua regia right. So what is aqua regia actually? It is a, you can say a mixture which is formed by mixing HCl with HNO3 and right so first of all you should know the constituents of the aqua regia. So what is it? It is the HCl with HNO3. Now the composition or you can say the ratio of volume is fixed. HCl is to be taken in 3 ratio and HNO3 is to be taken in 1 ratio means the volume the ratio of their volume is 3 is to 1. So when we just mix them it forms the aqua regia. Now the question is that what why we need this aqua regia and or, or you can say what is the purpose of this aqua regia. So this aqua regia actually has the ability to dissolve the noble metals that means this solution <coughs> actually can dissolve even those substances which are uh, least reactive. So how they dissolve, so just see when we just mix them, so what, what actually this aqua regia has, <coughs> when we just mix it, what do we get? We get, <coughs> it is 3 in volume, so I am writing 3 HCl. This is what we get, right. So that means the aqua regia contains this thing. Right. So when we just react with noble metals, so let us take noble metal gold. So when we just react, so this chlorine just react with it and leads to the formation of the compound. 
so that means it is capable of the uh, this thing dissolving the least reactive metals also so if you get a question in the, the exam that what is aqua regia just say it is a mixture of hcl and hno3 and what is the volume that is 3 is to 1 volume so what actually does it has so when the, this and this kind of volume is mixed so we get nocl 2cl and 2h2o this 2cl actually dissolves the least reactive metals as i've shown you we took an example of gold as you know that gold falls uh, at bottom in reactivity series it is one of the least reactive metal right so that means when it reacts with this uh, this thing and it gets dissolved leading to the formation of its chloride so that means it has just dissolved the noble metal also so this is the actually the use of the aqua regia that it is capable of dissolving even the noble metals so these are the properties the chemical properties just you have to uh, keep in mind the valencies again when you are doing chemical reactions in chemistry you need to be well versed with the valencies first if you are not well versed with the valency you are not going to uh, uh, you it won't be uh, possible for you to do a correct chemical reaction